Hello, my name is Rebecca Hill, my candidate number is 4377, and this is my presentation for IB Film Study Standard Level. Today I'll be discussing the 1992 superhero thriller film Batman Returns, directed by Tim Burton. Burton began his career in film with short films, most famously Vincent in 1982 and Frankie Muni in 1984. His directing debut came in 1982 with Hans and Gretel, a TV special for the Disney Channel. His first mainstream exposure was 1985's Pee Wee's Big Adventure. By the time of Batman Returns released in 1992, he had directed ba Batman, its 1989 predecessor, and possibly his most famous film, 1990's Up With His Hands. For Burton, directing a series of superhero blockbusters is a departure from his more eccentric, niche, gothic-style film. However, he had proven himself able to be a successful director, even with such an iconic character as this. Batman Returns is a superhero thriller film, a hybrid of two genres. The directors conform to the expected conventions of these genres to fulfil the audience's expectations. For example, low-key lighting is used to reflect, the emotion, reflect emotion and build tension. Additionally, it is set in an urban environment to add realism and create fear and tension within the audience. The director uses themes and social cultural, mes social cultural mes messages to convey ideas to the audience. Firstly, it focuses on the evil within society. Through Mac Trek, the audience is encouraged to question figures of authority and power such as businessmen. He lies, cheats, and even murders to get what he wants. Through the Penguin, the audience has shown, shown the superficial, judgmental nature of society today. Those who do not fit in, either through looks or behaviour, are immediately cast out. It also serves as a warning as to what can happen to the outcasts. Of course, not every ostracised individual will become a supervillain and wreak revenge on their peers, but Burton warns ordinary society to be more accepting with, with the misfits, or they could face unexpected consequences. This is also true of Selina Kyle, although from a different perspective. She was not overtly an outcast, she was just too much of a force for good, and therefore was pushed around, beaten up, moulded and changed by ever-present evil. Again, it is the director providing commentary on the inner mechanics of society and which types of people like to survive. Throughout Batman Returns, the binary opposition of good versus evil is portrayed. The good is always Batman, but the bad is represented by a series of villains. The circus gang, followed by the penguin, followed by Catwoman. Of course, this also doubles as the binary opposition of hero versus villain. Batman Returns targeted fans of DC and comic, DC Comics and or Batman, fans of superheroes and comic book stories in general, and those familiar with Tim Burton. The film was released with every intention of being a box office smash. The superhero genre is incredibly popular, and if a superhero film is done well, there's every chance of being the number one film of the year. It was Burton's fifth credited film, and his second superhero thriller, three years previously he had directed Batman. The film was reasonably, pop reasonably popular, and this could have been due to several factors. Firstly, Burton's dis distinctive style had gained a cult following. Secondly, he had previously started to experience, meaning that this effort was likely to be more well put together and therefore more popular. Finally, there's the issue of what, there's the issue of what Batman Returns is. A superhero sequel. Superhero films are, more po are popular with most audiences, but a sequel to a mo moderately successful flick about one of the most re recognisable superheroes of the past century was almost destined to do well at the box office. The extract I've chosen runs from approximately 2455 to approximately 2955. I've chosen this extract because it contains a pivotal moment within the film and is full of interesting choices, both by a director and cinematographer. The director and cinematographer have clearly considered the impact of particular shot types and framing on the audience, and there are several examples of this. Firstly, as soon as, as, as Lily gets up from her chair to return to the office, it cuts to a bit to long shot, showing the entire apartment. The director's intention is to reflect her, per reflect her personality via the set. Her flat is a combination of order and chaos. While it's mostly tidy, her living room cabinet is covered with clutter. There is a scarf thrown carelessly over an armchair and the draining bottle of dishes on it. This shows that, at least to some extent, her mind is in the same state. While Selena is finding the Bruce Wayne file, we see Matt Shrek first, then Selena Carl. They are both filmed from a distance as in horror films, and the director's intention with this imagery is to build tension by with foreshadowing to turn the conversation between them. The cinematography is an abundance of close-ups in order for the audience to develop an emotional character connection with the characters on screen. The editing of the piece has been carefully constructed to control the audience's emotion the experience of the scene. For example, um, when we see Shrek's offices, immediately a foreboding piece of music begins. The director's, the director's intention with this is to make the audience associate the offices with evil and villainy. The first sound heard in the extract is a cold call about perfume. Selena rejects it, and the director's intention is to show that although she fits the female stereotype of liking pink, she is not drawn in by fashion fads and offers. Therefore, she is different from the rest of society. The second is an answer a message from Selena Carl to herself, reminding her to go back to the office. The director's intention here is not only to provide exposition and set the next scene, but also to portray Selena's personality. 
the forgetful, hard-working image is set up to make the transformation into Catwoman even more shocking for the audience. As Matchstick walk, walks up the staircase, the score is tense and foreboding, only containing strings and bass. The director's intention is to build tension and hint at Shrek's true nature. The director has also made some interesting choices about lighting. When Shrek begins interrogating Kyle, both, both their faces are brightly lit, Shrek's more so than Kyle's. In direct contrast, in direct contrast to the rest of the room, this is an example of chiaroscuro lighting, and the director's intention is to draw attention to the confrontation between them. The hard lighting, although illuminating Shrek's face expression, bathes the rest of him in shadow. The director's intention is to show the audience who Shrek truly is. His public persona, the benevolent business, businessman, is the most visible part of him. However, the villainous scheming side that remains hidden is actually the most dominant part of him. Furthermore, the hard lighting gives his face an eerie, supernatural, ghost-like quality. The mise-en-scene within the clips creates interesting vis visuals which creates mood and atmosphere. For example, at the beginning of the extract, Selina is holding the taser she found when she first met Batman. She turns it in her hands, inspecting it, clearly fascinated with it. The director's intention here is to both hint, and hint to and mislead the audience. Many will see this gesture, the gesture as a sign of believe it, Selina having a romantic interest in Batman. However, the fascination will soon be much less friendly. While holding the taser, she is sitting amongst cuddly toys, and the director's intention is to apply innocence and youth. This is further implied by the decoration of her flat. It is bathed in pink, a colour often associated with little girls and young women. When she stands up, we see a black cat in the corner of the shop, clearly a hint for the director at a later identity that will be missed by most cinema goers. Later, as Selina searches for the Bruce Wayne file, we see the portrait of Matt Stretch Shrek in the edge of the shop, with Shrek seemingly watching the audience. The director's intentions hint at the influence and power that Shrek has over Gotham, and also to mirror what is actually about to happen. Shrek will watch Selina for a few seconds as she searches for a file before confronting her. When pushed out of the window by Matt Shrek, Selina falls through several awnings decorated with cats. The director's intention is to provide further visual clues to the identity she will soon assume. As with mise-en-scene, the director uses costume as a way of reflecting the characters' personalities and ultimately their role within the film. Selena Carl's glasses, messy up doing boring coloured suit, are used by the director to portray the stereotype of the nerdy professional secretary. The audience, the audience watches the film believing she will not be much more than a side character. However, they are com proven completely wrong when she later transforms into Catwoman. By contrast, Max Shrek's high collars, cravats and mad hair are a visual representation of the eccentric billionaire stereotype. The director's intention is not only to portray the stereotype, but also to reference other characters that address like this in pop culture. Max Shrek is re reminiscent not only of Burton's early creation, Beetlejuice, but also the mad scientist Rotvang from Metropolis. The final method the director uses to portray characters and convey emotion is non-verbal communication, and he does this to great effect. While trying to explain herself to Max Shrek, Selina Kyle is reluctant to meet his eye, displaying nervousness and fear. Before pushing Selina out the window, Matt Shrek leans into one's deck, reminiscent of figures such as Dracula.